And if I were setting up a character, that would be enclosed inside single quotes. Okay. And in addition to character, there's also a Boolean, which is simply true or false. And we'll initialize this to true. Okay, now there is a subtle difference. In C++, a, a bool is a Boolean data type, a primitive data type in it. Zero is synonymous with false, one synonymous with true. In Java, it's not the same. So you there's functions you can use Boolean, parse Boolean to, to part, or you can write your own function, but there are some subtle differences between the way C++ handles a Boolean and the way Java does. But for now, it's a one byte value that would either be true or false. Very useful in many logic statements. Okay, in addition, let's take a look at the string data type. And the string could take a whole word, a paragraph, a whole page, or even a whole book of text. Megabytes and megabytes. Or you've so if I were to create a string, again, string and that could hold multiple characters, or a string of characters. So I'm declaring and initializing a string. Now this won't be color coded, but it is a class of object in Java. So I've declared and initialized these different data types. So we've talked about how they're different in size and their syntax is a bit different. It's just, it's important in Java, as well as many other object-oriented languages that are strongly typed, to store the data in an appropriate container, or the right kind of container. So, um, you know, at least as far as data primitives are concerned, you know, we haven't got to the point of writing our own classes yet, zombies and monsters and employees and checkers and things like that. But when we get there, we'll use a similar process of declaring and initializing those classes of object. But for now, these built-in classes, okay, um, these built-in primitive data types or type wrapper classes in Java will be utilized in this way, in this fashion, in this manner.